thinking about? I was just listening to the slaves singing about the river. <laughs> Ain't it wonderful that they can sing with such enthusiasticness about water? But that's the romantic old Mississippi. Yeah, it's a great river. It only made one mistake. It don't run through Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, Dad. Still homesick for Pennsylvania? No, oh, I don't know. I'm getting kind of used to it. Hey, you know my slaves sing better than anybody else's slaves around here. That's because they love you. You're always freeing someone of them. Yeah, I think I'll go down and free a couple of those tenors right now. Hey, Carl, where are you going? I'm off to New Orleans, Dad. What again? <laughs> well, <laughs> give them my regards. Why, what do you mean? Uh, son, you can't fool your father. You got something on your mind, and it's a petticoat. Yeah. Carl, you're in love, and I'm glad of it. Listen, on this plantation, we got wonderful cotton fields and flower beds. Now what we want is some little feet to be running over. Would you like that, Dad? Would I like it? <laughs> Carl, I haven't bought any baby shoes since I bought yours, and I want to start all over again. So you go ahead down to New Orleans and make arrangements. Oh, 
I beg your pardon. Good evening, Mr. Van Horn. Good evening. Would you ask Miss Tiziana if she would be so considerate as to see me? Certainly, sir. But I think both you and I know that she will be very glad to see you. Huh? Here you. At your service, Mr. Montague. I don't like being made a fool of by your artists. But I have no control over Pee Wee and Ginger. They're I'm always. I'm talking up to... about Dixiana. Oh. You'd better advise her to stop throwing roses to strangers. I beg your pardon, sir. By what right do you give orders to Mr. Catano or his artists? Well, sometime I might show you, Senor Catano's IOUs, if it's any business of yours. Please, please, I'll go at once. And don't forget to speak to Dixiana about the road. I resent that message to Miss Dixiana. So you're the son of the Pennsylvania Dutchman who inherited the Van Horn estates, aren't you? Cornelius Van Horn is my father. Mm. Well, tell your father that both he and his son had better stay out of my business. Anything that has to do with Miss Dixiana is my business, sir. And just how do you reckon that? Are you in love with her? That's not a matter to discuss with you. My boy, I don't think you should be so serious about a girl you treat so lightly. Sir? Have you proposed marriage? Have your parents met the young lady? Why, no, sir. Well, perhaps they have different customs where you come from. But in New Orleans, these little formalities are observed by gentlemen. However, I don't think Dick Zian will be upset. You keep her name out of this, or? Or? There's one formality I do know about. It has to do with a glove across the face. I see you have the glove, Mr. Van Horn. Oh! Gentlemen! What's the cause of this scandalous behavior? This gambler said something about you I resented. Mr. Montague said something about me? Well, I'm sure Mr. Montague couldn't possibly say anything about me that anyone could resent. You're quite right, Miss Dixiana. It was a mistake. No, it wasn't. I insist. You're quite mistaken, and any impression you might have had to the contrary is wrong. And I take this occasion to wish you good evening. Good evening. Carl, what happened? Dixiana, do you think that I'm a gentleman? Why, certainly. Do you think I'm serious? I think you're very, very serious. <laughs> Dixiana, oh. I adore you. Oh. Dixiana, you mustn't kiss the customers. What's the meaning of this? This lovely lady has promised to be my wife. What? Dixiana, you're not going to bust up our trio, are you? But I just idolize him. Now, ain't that sickening? You can get a wife anywhere. Or where are we going to get another baby ostrich? Yes, and the only woman slim enough is a Spanish dancer, 80 years old. <laughs> can you imagine the customers when we break open the egg and out comes that old Spanish omelet? <laughs> it makes me feel as if I want to bust into tears. Oh, Pee Wee. I am going to bust into them. No, Pee Wee. Cheer up, little fellow. I'm taking Dixiana to the plantation with me. You boys come along for a visit. No. Gently, Pee-wee, gently. Home cooking, three meals a day. The old hat says, wear me high, but the stomach whispers chicken and hoe cake. Please say yes, Pee-wee. No. Oh, I'll be so afraid with all those grand people. You'll never turn me down yet. Please say yes. All right. Yeah, that's more like it. <coughs> I'll go and tell all the folk. Folk, folk, listen, I got the news for you. Cupid. Yes, Mr. Carr? Ride to the plantation and tell my father I'm bringing three distinguished guests. And Cupid, tell him that I'm bringing him a daughter. I fly. What's all the commotion? <laughs> the commotion is me, because I'm going to marry the grandest, handsomest man in all of No. Are you going to quit the service business? Yes, sir. From now on, I'm appearing under the personal management of Mr. Carl Van Horn. Oh, congratulations,
No woman would ever marry a man if she could see him asleep first. Wake up, you sea lion. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, do I have to? Wake up. Wake up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just had a most wonderful dream. Ah, oh, tell me, darling. What was oh, it? Oh, it was beautiful. Tell me, tell me. I dreamed... Yes? I dreamed I was once again a widower. What? You Lord Chesterfield? I'll make myself a widow unless you stop snoring and learn better manners. What's the matter with my manners? Matter? Huh. Why, you don't even look like a gentleman. Well, do you think you look like a lady? Well, I will tonight. Oh. <laughs> oh, why can't you act like these southern men, full of grace and fire? I got no fire. I'm from Philadelphia. Uh, that's what's the matter with you. You're so dull. You're so cold. You, you eel. Say, now, listen, maybe I'm an eel, but I refuse to act like a monkey. Why not? Well, every time I meet a lady, you want I should bow down and kiss her hand. And I hate the smell of soap. Now, you listen to me. I've been listening to you for you years. You listen I'm to me. I'm sick and tired. Shut up. Please. Oh, you're the clumsiest, most awkward Dutchman that ever owned a plantation. Well, that's all right. I didn't want to own the plantation. The place was wished on me by a will. Well, you've got it. Well. You've got to live up to it. Get out of bed. I will when I get good and ready. What? And I'm ready right now. Say, for why I should get up so early? For your lesson in manners. Manners? Is this manners? Yeah. Can't yeah. you wait till I get some clothes on? How can a man take manners lessons in his disability? Come here. Oh, dear. Cornelius? All right, birdie dear. Don't lose your temper. Yeah. Now. Now. Imagine I am a lady. That would be impossible. No, no. I am a lady being introduced to you. Ah, somebody else. Yes. <laughs> well, that's different. Yes. <clears throat> Madam, I have the honor of presenting Mr. Van Horn. Now, the lady stretches out a languid hand and she says, Sir, I am delighted. <laughs> well, she should be. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, now bow. No. Bow deeply. Oh, from here? Yes. Stately. Yeah, that's fine. Kiss her hand and say, Madam, the honor is mine. And may I extend a welcome to the fairest lady who has ever graced my home. I got to say all that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll try it. <clears throat> Madam? No, Madame! Damn, Shh. damn, damn! Don't let the servants hear you swear. Oh, you, you tree toad. You horsefly! You, you! I don't know what to call you! Well, let's see. How about a wood tick? Who's there? It's Cupid, Mrs. With great news! Great news? That must be from my son, Carl. Listen, great tidings. Yes. Master Carl has picked himself a bride. A bride? And is fetching over here today. Where did he pick her and who is she? What's her name? How you expect me to know that? Hmm. All I know. She's mighty fine and sweet. Oh, but Cornelius, she might be anybody for all I know. Yeah, well, that's all right. You don't know such a much, you see. <laughs> I've known my son since infantry. And I'll bet you that as a wife picker, he's a mass pastor. A post mass, a pad, <coughs> he's a past master. And Master Carl is bringing two distinguished gentlemen also. Oh, 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 distinguished gentlemen. Oh, Cornelius, we may get into high society at last. May you then say, oh. you leave it to my son Carl and we're in now. Oh. Oh. Hear what he said? Yes. Carl's bringing some aristocratics oh. here. <laughs> We're getting populated. Oh, I must give some orders. No, no. I'll give the orders. Yeah? All right, you give the orders, but I'll still wear pants. What are you going to say to her? I'll say, lady, if my son ain't a better picker than I was, you must be terrible. Oh, oh. 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 
How, oh, madam, may I present my future wife, Miss Dixiana Caldwell? The honor is mine. You're mighty kind, Madam Van Horn. And this is my father. Dad, I brought you a daughter. I hope you're going to like me, sir. Like you? <laughs> I'm going to love you. <laughs> uh, Dixiana, uh, this is Venus. She will serve you well. Venus? And now may I be allowed to escort you to your room? I'm afraid you won't find it as grand as some as... Oh, may I present Mr. Ginger Dandy and little Pee Wee? Welcome, sirs, to our modest home. Gentlemen, this is my father. Oh, glad to meet you, sir. Glad to meet you. You're sir. welcome. You're welcome. Won't you come in the house? Yes, yes, <laughs> nice place. Yes. Oh, Dad. Huh? Oh, excuse me. Sure, sure. Go right ahead, go right ahead. <laughs> well, Dad, Carl, she's wonderful. <laughs> Do you think Madame Van Horn will like her? I don't care whether she likes it or not. Say, listen, don't you think we ought to make a little celebrating in honor of the occasion? Absolutely. <laughs> we could have a few juleps. <laughs> Maybe by 8 o'clock I'll be numb enough to enjoy the party. <laughs> ah, splendid, splendid, splendid. Hey. Why didn't you take the wheels off the covered wagon? That's the old family bed, sir. Does all the family sleep in that? At one time? You sure is calm, good sir. Hey, does she sleep in it too? She's been dead 40 years. 40 years? Well, we won't have to move over for her. <laughs> if you gentlemen need anything, this rings. Uh, just a moment, just a moment. Here, uh, Here's two dollars for you, son. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Jasper, how would you like to make two dollars more? All right, sir. Now, the idea is that we will bet you two dollars that you can't pick up these three cigars one at a time off the floor without saying ouch. That's a whole lot easier than shooting craps. Just try me, sir. Here, uh, I'll hold the stakes. Now, the cigars are placed. Pick them off the floor one at a time without saying ouch. Just watch them, sir. That's one. That's one. That's two. You're doing fine. Ow! That's the answer. It never misses. It never misses. Say, Ginger. I wonder how people who live in houses like this pass their time. It's a lucky thing for us that Dixie Anna's married into this. Gee, you no, know, I'd love to marry myself into a bed like this. What are you looking for? Some place to put these ashes. Throw them on the floor. Throw them on the floor? <laughs> not me. You know, may not know it, but I've decided that I'm going to be an old Southern gentleman. Well, why didn't you say so? Isn't that a dandy? Certainly is. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. I'll bet you that thing is over a hundred years old. Easy. That's what we call an old antiquity. <laughs> Hello, boys. <laughs> everything all right? <laughs> you got some wonderful things here. Yeah, well, you see, everything in this room belonged to my Aunt Sophie. Aunt Sophie? That's a picture. Oh, is that Aunt Sophie? Yes, sir. She lived in uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> she died of throat trouble. Oh, they hung her, huh? I guess so. She was high strung. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good. <laughs> Did you say that everything in this room belonged to Aunt Sophie? Sure, everything. She brought it with her from Chambersburg. She must have been a very nervous woman. Oh. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> kind of different, ain't it? Yes, 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 yes. Unusual. <laughs> yeah. Quaint is the word. Quaint, quaint. Yeah. Quaint. And useful. Yeah, that's useful. Uh, not now, it's too old. It won't catch anything anymore. 
used to be all right, but see, they can't even get in now. It's so bent here. Is he here? Oh, yes, yes. It's it's sorry, it's all, huh? it's much too old. It's all crooked. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> How's it look? Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's like a bouquet, eh? Huh? <laughs> here you are. Uh, your good health. No, you're good health. No, 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 you're no, good. No, no, you're, you're good, good health, sir. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I'm not feeling so good either, you know. No. Ginger, <laughs> back here. Your health, sir. Your good health, sir. <clears throat> How it is, sir? Eh? Mm. Now, let, let's go up and drink it. Let's go up and drink uh, uh, and so. And so. Here's to Aunt Sophie. <clears throat> that's good, that's good. <laughs> Hey, you boys know any stories? <laughs> I love a good risky story. And I love games. <laughs> stories and games. He likes uh, games. Do uh, you like gambling games? Any kind of game. I don't care what it is. Have you ever heard of the game of the three cigars? <clears throat> no, let's play it. It's a game where you got to put up money. Well, what do I care? I'm a sport. He's a sport. <laughs> Who'll give him the answer? <clears throat> Listen. You hold the stakes and I'll give him the answer. Right. I'll bet you five dollars yeah. that you can't pick up three cigars without getting kicked. Yeah, come. <laughs> the idea of the game is that we'll bet you five dollars that you can't pick up these three cigars one at a time without saying ouch. Ouch? Oh, you see ouch, yes. <laughs> a child will go to work. <laughs> That's my five. And there are the cigars. Now, why does it not? Let me sign on here. I got to pick these up one at a time. One at a time. And not say ouch. Not say ouch. Easy. One. That's one. Two <laughs> cents. It's a brass round here. <laughs> two. There's two. There's two. Are I call it by dog? No, no, now it's the test. This is the test. This is the easiest one. Oh, yes, yes. I'll do it quick, look, see. Ouch! Good evening, Madam Van Horn. This is a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Oh, my husband, please. Do you understand all I told you? Uh, my husband, Cornelius. Uh, madam, the honor is mine. Oh, just his hand shake. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm much obliged to meet you, Mr. Porter. Colonel Porter? That's all right. I'll call him a general if he wants me to. Anyhow, you're welcome. I am delighted to meet your acquaintance. The pleasure is mutual, I assure you, sir. Thank you. Sir. And now I think I'll go inside my son, Carl, because I'm sure his fiancée is not ready to come down. Don't hurry, Mama. Give Carl a chance to say goodbye to his friends. That is the last indisputable right of the bachelor. Oh, yes. You know, it took Cornelius a whole week to say goodbye to his bachelor friends. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, didn't it, darling? Yes, Teddy. <laughs> yes. And if I'd have had any sense, I'd have been saying goodbye, yes. Gentlemen, come here. <laughs> Are your glasses full? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Carl, to your bride. Carl. All right. It's too bad that one so young as Carl must give up all his bachelor fun. <laughs> <laughs> you won't waste any sympathy on me when you've met her. Ever soldier's brave before going into battle. <laughs> <laughs>
Here's to the great night. Here's to the late night. Memories grand will last me forever. Wrapping a flag on of our bachelor side. Under the stars until sun arrives. Here's a farewell to liquor and girls. Good luck and good goodbye. Old pals. Here's to the old Dixie Anna, Dixie Anna, I want you to meet our most distinguished guest, Colonel Porter. I am glad to meet the most distinguished guest, whose praises are on every tongue. Oh, you're entirely too kind, Colonel Porter. No, he isn't, Dixie Anna. Dixie Anna, ah, uh, your name is as pretty as your eyes, my dear. You're quite right, Colonel. Gentlemen, a long while to come down. Yeah. It'll surprise me if they make it at all. <laughs> oh, I'd have kept you waiting. Hi, hi, you vain creatures. You've been drinking. <laughs> no, drinking. <clears throat> You're forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, aren't you amusing? <laughs> I adore young men. <laughs> I should have married someone nearer my own age. <laughs> She adores young men. <laughs> yes. Show her the cigar game. Don't she know the game of the three cigars? You sure she don't know it? No. <clears throat> Madam. Yes? Do you know the cigar game? The cigar game? That strikes my fancy. She knows it. Why? She said it strikes her fancy. Yeah. Please try and tell me. She, she doesn't not. mean it that way. Is it something new? New? <laughs> no, it's very old. As a matter of fact, it's an old Indian game. Indian? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Kickapoo. <Yeah. laughs> kick a what? The Kickapoo. Oh. Come on, let's you and I play Indian, will <laughs> It's a game where you've got to put up money. How lovely. How much? Five dollars. No, not exciting enough. Make it 25. <laughs> Make it 50. <laughs> Give me the money. Here, take it all. It's worth it. <clears throat> now, now. Who, uh, who's going to give her the answer? The one with the biggest feet. Suppose you give her the answer. Uh, I'd love to, but I got fallen arches. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pee Wee, you're elected. You'll have to give her the answer. Well, <laughs> I'll try my best. Now, I'll hold the stick. <laughs> now. The idea of the game is yes. that we're going to bet you that you can't pick up these three cigars off the floor one at a time without saying ouch. <clears throat> the money's mine. I never said ouch in my life. <laughs> You're going to ouch like you never ouched before. Oh. Now, Bertie, yes. remember, yes. bow deeply, 
and pick them up one at a time. Watch me, sir. One, that's splendid, splendid, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Number two, if you please. Number two. You know, it's so easy, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous, I'm laughing now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not, not yet. Uh, splendid. <laughs> that's two. Now comes the final test. Number three. <laughs> Number three. Yeah. I don't get it. Oh, I now she will get it. <laughs> Hurry up, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and there you are. Why didn't she give her the answer when she picked up the second cigar? From now on, we'll play this game in a vacant lot. Are you sure you don't want to go in for supper? Not yet, honey. You know, I just can't get used to all this beauty. Well, you don't have to hurry. It's going to be yours for the rest of your life. All this? Ma? I wish it was more. Do we know any other tricks? Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> Would you like to see the famous glass and saucer trick? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time that this celebrated trick has ever been attempted at a private party. Oh. Tell them, Ginger. Oh, one glass. Yes. There you are. One more glass, Ginger. There you are. Now, <clears throat> one saucer, one more glass. There you are. Pee-wee, please be careful. Don't worry, I... I never missed this thing in my life. Oh, oh. oh you stupid dunce! You've ruined my wonderful glass. I know it. Gee, I shouldn't have done it. You should have let Dixieanna do it. Dixieanna? Certainly. That's her famous trick in the circus. Dixieanna in a circus? Sure, Katana circus. Circus people in my house. Is this true? Yes, Madam Van Horn. You see, Carl thought that... Ah, so this is your doings. I might have known you'd select a bride from the scum of New Orleans. She's better than you are, madam. Shut up! Please don't fall over me. Get out of my house. You won't put her out of here. No, I won't, but the servants will. Jasper! Venus! Run them out! Mama! Let me alone! Let me alone! I shall die of shame! I shall die! No such I shall die! Gee, Dixieanna, I'm awful sorry. Not only did you let the cat out of the bag, but all the kittens. Oh, it isn't his fault, Ginger. What are we gonna do now? Get the coach. We're gonna get away from here as soon as ever we can. But where are we going? Back to the circus where we belong. But Dixieanna... Don't you know orders when you hear them? Come on. Please, run them out! Dixieanna, how soon can you be ready to leave here? What do you mean? Just as soon as I can pack my things, we're going away together. No, we aren't. I'm not going to come between you and your family. Please don't argue with me, honey. My mind's made up. But, Carl, I... Carl, what are you going to do? Let Dixieanna tell you. He wants to take me away from here. He says he's... He's leaving here forever. Forever? But I won't let him do that. I'm going away, but by myself. Where? I'm not telling anybody, because I don't want him to follow me. I don't ever want to see him again. But, but don't you love my boy? Love him? I love him so much. And I never want to hurt him, like leaving you would do. <laughs> it's mighty nice of you, sir, to have a circus girl cry on your shoulder. I wish I could do something to show my respect for the finest lady that ever graced my home. Dear, can I have the great honor to show you to your carriage? Take off, hand off his arm, you hussy. Now, that's enough out of you. For once my foot goes down, this house belongs to me. And if you want to keep on living in it, 
You've got to respect my friends. Mr. Van Horn, it has been a great pleasure to know this charming lady. May I have the honor of opening her carriage door? Look, this is marvelous luck. Don't take them back. But I need them in my circus. Do as you're told, you'll have no circus. Well, 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 here we are, folks, here we are. Three stars, count them. One, two, three. My, that old saw there certainly smells good. Strike up the band and give three cheers for Pee Wee, Ginger, and Little Dixiana. Hooray! Hooray! Well, Mr. Cartana, we've come back. I don't want you. I've made other arrangements. But Mr. Cartana, you... I tell you, I'm done with you. He means it. What are we gonna do now? Look for another job. There aren't any other jobs. It's all my fault. Oh, what'll I do? What will I do? You can uh, work for me. In a gambling house? Well, I, I have entertainment rooms, <laughs> and I have a heart. Does your heart beat for one or for three? <laughs> three of a kind. You win. We're going to give you the best show you ever saw. Well, honey, what do you say? I'm sorry, but I never worked in a gambling house. I never thought of that. The job's off. Yeah, we couldn't let her take it. We couldn't let her take it. Wait a minute, boys. You stuck with me. Thank you, Mr. Montague. We'll be there tonight. I'll give you a square deal. Now, Dixie, are you sure you're not going to be sorry? Honey, now, don't worry about yeah, it. We don't want you to do anything you don't want to do, you know. But listen, we got to change our routine. We yeah, can't go I'll on I'll tell there. you how we open the act. Yeah. She sings Dixie Ann at open the right. act. Yeah, yeah, then we well, do something. What are you boys going to do? Well, we got to change it. We can't do the ostrich act. I don't understand. You make Kaitana throw them down, and then you pick them up. If Dixie Ann is at my place, young Van Horn will follow. He can't keep away from her. Then you'll have plenty of reason for a duel. He's worth more to me alive than dead just now. That boy may take matters into his own hands and want to fight. <laughs> and we'll take matters into our hands. Just as we did with Philip Van Horn. Keep quiet. You're the only one that knows the truth about that duel. And if you talk, I'll close your mouth with a bullet from the same pistol. I won't talk. Don't be afraid. <laughs> All right, Mr. Blondell. <laughs>
finito sei di polpettare e faccio il gruzzo a sorpresa ma poi pensai che non stai male perché mi ha nata già la resa e ti compri o te sì herself. Looking for a handsome Romeo. Well, look no further, honey, because here I am, here I am. Oh, Ginger. Ginger by name and Ginger by nature. Come hither and rest on the vest of the chest of the guest that loves you best. I can't rest anywhere till I change my dress. Well, you change everything but your affection for me. You wait here for me now and I'll be back in five minutes. Don't forget. I won't forget. <laughs> I am the type of man who women never forget. Hello, Nanny. What's your hurry? I've got to go change my dress. You wait here, and I'll be down in five minutes. You bet I will. Now don't you forget, you wait. A bottle of wine and two glasses. No, thanks. I'm not drinking tonight, Pee Wee. Uh, how are you, Ginger? Are you waiting for anybody? Who, me? Oh. No, no, no. Are you sure you're not waiting for anybody? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm just leaving. <clears throat> Good night, Pee-wee. Good night, Ginger. Good night, Ginger. Good night, Pee Wee. There's your wine, sir. There's your change. Uh, one moment. For you, boy. Thank you. Well, here I am. Ah, little nanny. See the wine I got for you? Oh, uh, you're always thinking of me. You know why, honey? It's because I love you. Oh, uh, you don't love me anymore than Pee Wee does. Pee Wee. Nanny, when you're sitting next to a great, big, handsome animal like yours truly, why refer to an insignificant little ninny? Nanny. Now, that's what I call a true friend. Oh, I <laughs> knew you were there all the time. Hello, darling. Say, I've just been killing time waiting for you. Me and Nanny are sweethearts. 
She wants to be alone with me. You're a fine pal, you are. You got my ties, you got my socks, you got my clothes, and now you're trying to get my nanny. Come on, honey. This is a private conversation. Who's going to take you to the Mardi Gras? I am going to take her to the Mardi Gras. No, I am going to take her to the Mardi Gras. Don't I have something to say about this? <sighs> You're trying to take her away from me. You low down so and so and, and this and that. Sir, I reckon you all are not aware, sir, that you cannot speak that away to an old southern gentleman. Southern gentleman? <laughs> from South Brooklyn. How come you're a southern gentleman? My grandfather, Miss Nanny. My grandfather was an old southern planter. A southern planter? Yes. He was an undertaker in Alabama. You get out of here before I plant you. Although your objectionable language calls for us, sir, I reckon at the present time I will not challenge you to a duel. A duel? A duel over me? Goody, goody, goody. Farewell, fairest of your sex, till we meet again at the Mardi Gras. Honey, you'll meet me, won't you? I'm not telling who I'm going to meet. Oh, but baby, nobody loves you like I do. Oh, Ginger says that, and so do all the rest. But honey, when I say it, I mean it. You're the first girl I ever wanted to be my first wife. Aw, oh, Pee Wee. Though I'm rather sentimental, girls have made me very shy. And I thought love was accidental, like a thin duck in your eye. Never felt that I was falling. Till I took you by the hand. Now look who but the calling. Oh gosh, ain't love grand. I'm so sincere and believing. I hope you're never deceiving. There's no one I like, like I like you. You make me cry like big babies do. Believe me, honey, there's nobody who can creep in my arms the way that you do. My heart you juggle, my head you spin without a struggle. I just give in, I have a mission I've got to put through, my one ambition is
Ladies and gentlemen, for years I've made every effort to please and amuse you. Tonight I have the honor to announce the favorite star of the Hippodrome, Miss Dixiana. <laughs> so enthusiastic about Miss Dixiana because I have a proposal to make to you. Now, all of you know that a week from tonight, the voting for the Queen of the Mardi Gras will finish. And ladies and gentlemen, when they count those votes, who would you all suggest should win? <laughs> She'll make the most beautiful queen the Mardi Gras has ever seen. And I expect every man to do his duty. Wow, this for me. Because I want to make you forget the insults giving you up the river. I forgot. Well, possibly then it's because I want to make you remember me. I'll always do that. Folks, Miss Dixiana accepts the nomination. <laughs> Honey, promise me that you'll let me take you tonight to see Dixie Anna crown queen of the Mardi Gras. Uh, you know, I never make promises. Well, little people, this is a great night for all of us. Oh, I'm so proud to know Miss Dixiana. I know she's going to make a wonderful queen. She ought to make a wonderful queen. I voted 27 times for her, myself. <laughs> uh, you tell the other girls they can have the night off for the coronation. What time do the maids of honor call for Miss Dixiana? Well, according to the master of ceremonies, they should be here for in half an hour. Honey, who are you going with? I don't know who I'm going with. Hello, Ginger. Colonel Ginger to you, sir. Don't give me that. Ginger, why don't you stop following Nanny and me? 
Sir, the remarks of you all are ridiculous. Since Miss Nanny showed a preference for my humble self, the green-eyed monster has been chawing at you mighty hard, sir. She loves me best. Oh, 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 oh. You all forces me to laugh up my sleeve, sir. You'll be laughing up your pants leg if you don't let her alone. Suppose we let the fair object of our mutual passions decide for herself, sir. Nanny, tell us who you love best. Who won the duel? What duel? The duel you were gonna fight over me. Do you know that I just plum air forgot that air a duel? I haven't forgot the duel. We're gonna fight one right now. I'm afraid I can't fight a duel unless I've been properly insulted, sir. Eh. That, sir, is impossible. Do I have to tell you how to insult me? It can't be done. To challenge a southern gentleman to a duel, sir, he must be smitten across the face. My one big moment, you... It must be done with a glove, sir. You know darn well that I haven't got a glove. Allow me to proffer one of Miss Nanny's. Now you're insulted. Oh, me insulted by that little bitty glove? Ridiculous, sir. <coughs> you uh, say that you must be insulted by a glove. I insist upon a glove, sir. Wait until I polish this on your snoot. Now are you insulted? I'm afraid you're going to find me a very hard man to insult. But don't get discouraged, lad. You know, I'm getting sick of this. You must be insulted. Not yet, but you're getting hot. You almost had me then. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's call the whole thing off. <coughs> sir, I challenge you to a duel here and now. And, sir, I accept the nomination. We'll fight at from three to sixty-one and a half paces. We've got to have seconds. Seconds. Uh, boy. Would you like to make 15 cents? Yes, sir. This is my second. Mm-hmm. Your second. He looks more like a half an hour to me. Is this my second? Well, he's more of a split second. What am you all going to use for weapons? Weapons? <coughs> uh, why, I reckon we'll just haul down some of the artillery on yonder wall. Choose your weapon. On guard. What kind of a second are you? On guard. On guard. On guard. On guard.
You're going to get even with young Van Horn at last. What are you talking about? He's out there with Blondell and Montague. <laughs> and when they get through with him... They aren't going to do anything to him, if I can help it. After what his family did to you? I don't care what his family did to me. I still love him, Ginger. <laughs> Queen. Do you like me? You know I do. Then will you tell me something? Well, Anything. What are you going to do with that boy in there? <laughs> what I've been waiting for a long time. He wants to gamble. But he's been drinking. Who gave it to him? <laughs> you ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> My, but you're clever. <laughs> Have you got any money with you? I'm not thinking about that. I've seen cards lead to anger, and anger to the dueling oaks. Wait! What is it? Let me play against you. Why? I'll never forget the humiliation of leaving his father's plantation. You're wonderful when you want revenge. Revenge? That's it. Will you give it to me? I'd give you anything. Can you deal cards? Can't you? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and let you play them. <laughs> Say, you're a marvel. <laughs> and I thought you were a little saint. <laughs> Someday you'll find out what I am. All right. Get the cards. That'll give me a moment alone with you. There are no words to tell you how I adore you. Get the cards. What are you doing here? Well, lucky at love, lucky at cards, they say. I'm going to find out. To test whose love? Yours. Then why not play me? Wouldn't that be a more certain test? Would you let cards decide that? Why not? What game? Any you say. Stud. I think I'm being cheated. Cheated? By you, Dixiana. By me? I must be lucky at love. I've lost to cards. <laughs> oh, my lovely Dixiana. Must I lose you, too? A man is a fool to trust either cards or women. A woman can change, but cards can't. They always show their real faces. Then why not take another chance with them? I will. By Jove, you've won all I had with me. Then you'll quit. Not yet. Mr. Montague, may I have a word with you? But if you could only let me have 10,000. 
I'm sorry, but we extend no credit here. I can sign an IOU. You know my father. Your father? Well, well perhaps... Uh... Perhaps what? Of course, if you could give me your father's signature. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Are you going to let her win? But I couldn't... I'll my... hold the draft until you win it back. You'll hold it? You promise? Oh, sure. I can't afford to lose such a good client. Good with me. Win it. Bet. One thousand. Two thousand. What have I done? You tricked me. Both of you. You mean to call me a cheat? I've stood this long enough, Montague. We'll settle this now once and for all. You pay me attention to him. He's curious because I laughed at him. Wait, I might hit your gambler. What if I ever break? I'm afraid this isn't your lucky night. It is my lucky night. I might have married her if my eyes hadn't been open. Ha! My boy, are you crazy? Let me go, Dad. What a fool I've been to think you loved him. What a fool you've been to think I love you. Give me that. So you still love him, do you? He'll never know I'm here. But what about me? Pay homage to the Queen! What a queen you've created. Yes. And now I'll destroy her. <laughs> beautiful for the Mardi Gras. You look well yourself. I know it, honey. I know it. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> but what is that costume? Well, I'll tell you. It's pretty hard to disguise this mass of muscle, but the old military man remains the soldier. My, what adorable tassels. Tassels. 
Medals, my dear, medals. Given to me for bravery in action. May I inquire the significance of this one? What is she talking about? She wants to know where you got it. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I got that medal for fighting Indians. Fighting Indians? Yes. I stood there one Sunday morning when up the hill came 10,000 Indians. How many Indians? Uh, <clears throat> there was a thousand Indians coming up the hill. How many? I stood at that old squaw coming up the hill. <laughs> I said to her, I said, look here, Gladys. But you know, she didn't pay any attention to me. So I took old Gladys with the Tommy Hawk and I led her back to headquarters where the government gave me this medal and a dishonorable discharge. Oh, <laughs> now, ladies, 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 you mustn't run away. You mustn't run away. I haven't told you where I got that medal yet. Well, where did you get it? I got that little medal for jumping over Niagara Falls. Well, where did you get this one? For jumping back. And that? For jumping back. Two medals for jumping back? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't make it in one jump. But with all those medals, why are the big brass buttons? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Four big brass buttons, the pen and ball. And serving maids give policemen the call. The girls are won by a uniform blue. You don't believe it? I'll prove that it is blue. When he commanded eyesight, he tried to make her eyes bright. With a lump, tum, 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 young. When he commanded quick step, she started with a kick step. With a lump, tum, 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 young. Then she fell out and she fell in parading all the charms. She believed she won her hero by presenting us. The soldier put his hat on and left lady flat on her lump tum 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 Attention! Mark Tan! Fall out! Salute! Fall in! Hurrah! Let me see now!
kidnapped the queen. A rival king has been smitten by her beauty. <laughs> Make way for the royal kidnappers. <laughs> You know, for a minute, I thought that kidnapper was real. Why, Dan, what are you doing here? I'm looking for you, you young pup. Say, what's the matter with you? Are you going to let Montague took her away like that? And why not? Ah, uh, why not? Where's your brain? You fool. You chassack. You, you schlemiel. And if I knew any more names, I, you, you'd be on them. But if you could have seen what happened at the gambling house... I saw what happened in the gambling place. I was there. Then you saw her cheat me. Yes, I saw her cheat you, heaven bless her. But I saw her tear up that forgery check you made. Tear it up? Yeah. I don't understand. No, I didn't think you would, you thick-headed Dutchman. Well, see if you can understand this. Why did Dixie Anna leave the plantation? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Why did she push herself between you and Montague? How can I tell? Of course you can. <laughs> My language goes into bankruptcy. Because she loves you. She loves me? Yes, and that's the only thing I got against her. Come here, listen. Now you go and find her. Bring her back to the plantation, and if you don't bring her back, don't come back yourself. You'll help me, Dad? My boy. <laughs> Just the end of the kidnapping of the queen. And a good joke for played on. <laughs> situation explain itself, my queen? Your queen? Yes, my queen, since I've gone to all the trouble of stealing you. Let me out of here. Presently. After we've had a coronation ceremony all our own. The wedding of the Prince of Darkness and the Queen of Light. Only this time there won't be any regal robes or pearls. There's only one fitting vestment for such a queen. Why can't you surrender as magnificently as you fight? Take your hands off me. How can I? Don't you know I love you? Don't you know there isn't anything I wouldn't give for you? Let me take you away from New Orleans. Let me take you to Paris, to Italy, to all the gay places of the world. I'll show you the beautiful women of every country. And when you've seen them all, I'll make you more beautiful than any of them. And then, I'll make you mine. No. No? No. Of course, this means only one thing. I'm ready to go to the Dueling Oaks right now. Let me remind you, the place and choice of weapons is mine. Anything. Well, according to the code... Your code, what does oh, it mean to me? You stay out of the Stixiana. Your pleasure, Mr. Montague. Pistols in my courtyard in 15 minutes. Oh. In 15 minutes. Now get out. Inside him, it'll be murder. That's what's in my heart. Listen to me. Two years ago, he killed your uncle in just such a duel. Then I'll have a double revenge. No, you won't. Can't you see he provoked your uncle just so he could name the place and have the choice of weapons? And something happened. What? They were never able to find the spot where your uncle's bullet hit the wall. Oh, that has a hundred explanations. No. If you love me, you can't do it. Love you? That's why I must fight. Suppose he killed you. What would I do? Go on all my life loving you and knowing you were dead? But well, suppose you went on all your life knowing that I was a coward. No man's a coward who avoids being murdered. Now, Dixiana, let me take these things off. Carl, come away with me. What do you mean? Now. Dixiana. Oh, my darling. I want to feel you close to me like this. I want your arms around me. Your kiss is burning. Take me away. Anywhere. Paris, Italy. Kiss me.
piano. In case anything happens to me, give that to my father. All right, dear. sure you load him correctly. And you want to kill him? I'm going to kill him. Dixiana, what are you doing in that costume? Dixiana! Dixiana! He's coming downstairs now. You know Montague killed his uncle in a duel two years ago. some way we can get young Van Horn out of this? Yes, with one of these. As soon as you witness their loading. afraid to have them wave. Yes, why? Stay in, Montague. What's the matter down there? There's something wrong with one of those pistols. How do you account for that, Mr. Montague? The same way you can account for the death of your uncle. Keep still. It's about time New Orleans knew how he was murdered. So you're the one that told. No, believe me, I didn't say a word. I told you no, what I told you. No. Ginger, tell you what I'll do. I'll bet you this against that that you can't pick up the three cigars without hollering out. Are you telling the colonel, my boy, I invented the game of the three cigars? Yeah. <laughs> but this has a new point to it. <laughs> I don't want you conceited. I'll take that bet. All right. Now, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll lay the first cigar right down here like that. That's one. That's two. <laughs> and that's three. <laughs> now, you remember, all you have to do is pick up the three... Spare me the details, Lance. Spare me the details. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. That's one. <laughs> Aren't you standing too far away? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just dandy, just about here. Well, that's Ooh. two. That's two. <laughs> uh, Before I pick up the third cigar, could I trouble you for my sword? <laughs> now. 